giving thanks to God our Father and our Lord and Savior and Jesus' holy name. And thanks for tuning in to Forest Written, where man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All right. I want to be your reader, Brother Nashon. And we have Brother Harold, who's going to give a great lesson for those that have ears to hear to understand this true word of God. Brother right. Harold, go ahead, introduce yourself, and let's get into it. All right. It's always good to share the word of God with you, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. I'm Brother Harold, and today's lesson is entitled, Forgive Us Our Debts. And the lesson for this afternoon is all about forgiving one another. Brothers and sisters, it's all about forgiving one another because forgiveness is one of those things that can be very, very difficult, brothers and sisters. It can be challenging, and sometimes it can feel like it's almost impossible because a lot of us have been wrong and hurt by the ones that are closest to us, whether it's a parent or a spouse or your children, friends, family, co-workers. You name it. And it's especially difficult when you're the one that didn't do anything wrong. But nevertheless, God has called us to forgive. And a matter of fact, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven, brothers and sisters. So it's paramount that we understand how important forgiveness is in our lives. So we have to remember Jesus is our great example. And although he was whipped and beaten and hung on the cross for our sins, he still, before he died, said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So we need to take that as a great example. So today we're going to look at the importance of forgiveness. We're going to look at the importance of forgiveness and the importance of forgiving others and even forgiving yourself. So we're going to start this off in the book of John. We're going to start this off in the book of John, verse 23, because God knows if you're for real about serving him. He knows if you're truly repenting. See, we can't finesse God. We can't fool God because he knows all. So we're going to pick this up in John 4 and verse 23. When you have it, my brother, go ahead and read. But the hour cometh and now is when a true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. All right, so it says that the true worshiper shall worship in spirit and in truth. And guess what? If you're trying to ask God for forgiveness and you have not forgiven, then you're not worshiping in spirit and in truth, my brother. Continue on. God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're going to worship him, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? And a part of that is being merciful. Let's go over to Matthew 5. Being merciful is part of that, of, of, of forgiving. Being merciful is something that you an attribute that you have to have along with the fruits of the spirit so we're gonna read one verse matthew 5 matthew 5 and verse number seven and you got that go ahead and read my brother blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy see in order to obtain mercy you have to be merciful brothers and sisters and it's because you know what being merciful is in god's nature and it should be in your nature 
And in order to obtain mercy, you have to be merciful, right? And we need to have that mercy. And since we need it, we need to be able to get it, right? Let's go over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, because what we're going to do is we're going to try to establish a point on the attributes and characteristics of forgiveness. So we're going to go to 1 Peter 1, and we're going to pick it up in verse 15. What does it say, my brother? But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manners of conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Mm -hmm. See, it's written to be holy because the Lord is holy. And if we claim to be his, then we have to be as he is. Right? And we know that the Lord is long-suffering. He's merciful. And he's patient with us. And a lot of times, we want to give ourselves all the patience in the world. But when it comes to somebody else, man, we want to be quick to pull the trigger. We want to cut them off. We want to shun them and put them away because of something that they did to us. But we got to be able to forgive. Right? And the Lord, the Bible says he's rich in mercy. Let's take a look at that. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to pick it up in Ephesians 2 and verse 4. Ephesians 2 and 4. What does it say, my brother? But God, who is rich in mercy, Hold who on. is great love. Hold on. God, love. Is, God, who is rich in mercy. Pin that. Pin that because we have to be holy as God is holy. I'm sorry to cut you off interrupting, but I want people to hear that. Good. Let's start over that from the top, my brother. But God, who is rich in mercy, uh -huh. for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Mm -hmm. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved. See, brothers and sisters, even when we were enemies of God, because when we were dead in sin, he was patient with us because he could have wiped us out in our sins. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you are here, you listening to this message and you woke up this morning, he is long suffering. He's patient with you, brothers and sisters. So you should be patient with your brothers and sisters. Continue on, my brother. And I raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he raised us up together and made us to be able to sit together in heavenly places through Christ. Skip down to verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, uh -huh. and yet not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. See, you're saved not because of your own merit, mm -hmm. not because of what you can do for him. you saved through grace. And it was a gift, right? So guess what? He didn't have to send nobody to die for the sins of the world. He didn't have to do that. Because, because of Adam, we was already doomed. But he sent Jesus to forgive sins. Right? To your past sins. Now, we got to do our job and continue to walk in righteousness. But it all was a gift, brothers and sisters, that God saw fit to give us. We couldn't have earned it, right? So we know that God is rich in mercy. Let's go to Exodus, the 32nd chapter. God is rich in mercy. And in the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, we're going to look at an example of God's mercy because Exodus 32, in Exodus 32, Israel sinned a great sin when they came out of Egypt. And it was so bad that God was going to kill the nation and start over for Moses. But he was patient. 
after Moses reminded him of the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we're going to pick it up in Exodus 32 in verse 1. When you got it, you can go ahead, my brother. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people mm -hmm. gathered themselves together to Aaron uh -huh. and said to him, Up, uh, make us gods, which shall go before us. For if this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. So you see that these people have lost their mind. Moses is up there getting instruction from God. And these people, for whatever reason, maybe it was taking too long for them or whatever, decided that they was going to make a God and attribute what happened, what, the, their deliverance to that God that they made. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. <laughs> Continue read, my brother. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your son, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Mm -hmm. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. Mm -hmm. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Can you believe the nerve of these people? They made a molten calf, and they said that these are the gods that brought us out of Egypt. And that made the Lord very upset. Mm -hmm. They made him very upset. I mean, let's skip down to verse number seven, because we're going to see that God was angered by this, and he was getting ready to kill them all. But Moses had to intercede for the people, so... Verse 7, what does it say, my brother? And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get thee mm -hmm. down. But mm -hmm. thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. He said, Go and get ye down because thy people. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you it'll say my people, but he said, Thy people have, have committed this thing. Continue on. They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf. And have worshiped it mm -hmm. and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which are brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. See, that lets you know that ain't no secret thing that God don't hear and don't see. Mm -hmm. He quoted exactly what they said. Continue on, my brother. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Mm. Now, therefore, let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot against them, and I and then I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. So you see that the Lord was getting ready to wipe them out, like He wiped out all the people in Noah's time. He's getting ready to wipe them out and start clean with Moses. Mm -hmm. But see, Moses, being a servant of the Lord, reminded the Lord of His covenant. Right, and it ain't like God forgot, but He just spoke to the Lord and just reminded Him of His covenant. Let's see what He told, what He what He spoke to uh, to the Lord. Pick it up in eleven. Go ahead. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, "Lord, why don't Thy wrath wax hot against Thy people, uh -huh. which I have brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Mm -hmm. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say?" For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. So Turn Moses had to, I'm sorry, but Moses had to remind them that, hey, if you kill these people, man, that ain't going to do nothing but make the Egyptians talk about you and say, see, I knew that he was angry with them. He was going to take them out in the wilderness and kill them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, so Moses is just pointing all this out. But the Lord already knew this. But that just show you how serious God is against sin. Especially when you want to attribute his work to something else or another God. We can't do that, brothers and sisters. Continue on. 12. For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Mm-hmm. 
So you see that he told him to turn from his wrath. And when it says repent, it's not talking about repent from sin. It's just saying just hold back your wrath. Turn back uh, your hand of wrath from the people because of your covenant. That's what it's talking about. Continue on, my brother. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, mm -hmm. to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and saidest to them, I will multiply your seeds as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of would I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Uh huh. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So he reminded them of that covenant, and the Lord held back the wrath to show you his long suffering because the Lord was getting ready to wipe them all out. And he was going to just start from Moses. But due to his promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he held back his wrath. Skip down to verse 30. Skip down to verse 30. When you got it, go ahead and read. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said to the people, you have sinned a great sin. Mm -hmm. And now I will go up unto the Lord, pure venture, I shall make an atonement for your sin. Uh huh. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, oh, this people has sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Now, 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 now that, how many of us would be willing to do that? Moses was intercessing for the people and he asked the Lord that if you don't forgive them, block me out of the book. What book is he talking about? He's talking about the book of life. Absolutely. Moses was getting ready to trade places with these people. That is something serious, brothers and sisters. And that's how much meekness Moses had. Right? But let's see what the Lord said about it. Continue on, my brother. And the Lord said to Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out my book. Right. Whoever sinned against him is going to get blotted out of the book. Continue on. Therefore now go, lead the people into the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angels shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Uh-huh. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf when Aaron, which Aaron made. Now, the Lord didn't kill him, which he could have did. He just plagued them because you're not going. He's not going to let you off scot free. But he could have killed them, and that's just one example of the Lord's long suffering when you did something great against Him, right? Because they, they seen a great sin against him. Let's look at one more example of the Lord's mercy and how his richness and mercy and his servants, Moses' uh, meekness. Let's go to Numbers. Numbers the 12th chapter. Numbers the 12th chapter. And I want y'all to take note, brothers and sisters. Take your pen pad. And take note of these scriptures because these scriptures are going to help us become more humble and forgiven. We're going to read, we're going to start in verse number one, Numbers 12 and 1. When you got to go ahead and read, my brother. And Marion and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. All right, so real quick, this is going to talk about Aaron and Miriam and how they decided to speak against Moses. And we can want to look at how Moses dealt with it and think about how we handle things when people speak against us mm -hmm. and see if our actions are going to line up the way Moses' actions did. All right? Continue on, my brother. And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. <laughs> now, don't don't we get those types of jealous people when, you know, the Lord may give us a position or the Lord may put us in charge of something. 
And you always gonna have them people on the side that say who this brother or sister think that they are. Mm-hmm. Are they the only one that think they can do this? Or are they the only one that they can lead? Same spirit. Continue on, my brother. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. See, it's highlighting that Moses was very meek. Very meek. That's 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 something to take note of, brothers and sisters, because meekness is the thing that's gonna hold you when you want to dish out wrath. Continue on, my brother. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam. Come out, you three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation, and the three came out. <laughs> so that lets you know that you don't have to go take for tack with people. Because the Bible says vengeance is the Lord's, right? And the Lord is letting them, he called them out. You know how like a, a, a principal, a school teacher, a parent would call out, y'all three come here? The Lord called all three of them out there. The Lord heard everything that, that Miriam and Aaron talked about, right? And the Lord is getting ready to set them straight. Go ahead and finish reading, my brother. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to the pillar of cloud and stood the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Mm -hmm. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. Mm -hmm. I serve in Moses, not so. Who is faithful in all my house? Mm -hmm. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then, were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Mm-hmm. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against him, and he departed. So that's letting you know, see, the Lord is the one that's going to stand up for you. So you ain't got to strike back. And he let them know, I'm the one that put Moses in charge. I speak with him. Whoever I choose to be my prophet, that's who the prophet is. So y'all should have been afraid to speak against my servant because I'm the one that put him in charge and the Lord is letting them know that. Continue on, my brother. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said to Moses, I lies, my Lord, I beseech thee Mm-hmm. Lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Mm-hmm. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of her mother's womb. Right. So, how many of us would have rejoiced in that situation and been like, "Ah, see what you get. That's what you get right. for talking against me." But the Bible said Moses was a meek man, and instead of Rejoicing of the fact that God struck him with the struck Miriam with the leprosy, and Aaron was shook by it too. He was shook. He he he, he saw this thing and, and it made him afraid too. Mm-hmm. Instead of rejoicing in that, let's see what Moses did. Let's see uh, uh, how he handled the situation. Did he rejoice in it and pick at it? Let's see what he did. Thirteen, my brother. And Moses cried to the Lord saying heal her now oh god i beseech thee no he said get her again god heal her now god i beseech thee oh he he prayed for her and asked the lord to heal her Mm -hmm. that is a humble servant Mm -hmm. and that's a lot to be learned out of that brothers and sisters that should let you know the bible even tells us to love our enemies and that's a hard thing to do and when you're dealing with somebody that is constantly on your back and on the back of your neck and giving you a hard time, instead of hoping that something bad happens to him, pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. Ask the Lord to change his heart. Ask the Lord to give him a, a righteous spirit and that he gets to know Jesus. And do like Moses did him. And let the Lord do his work. That's how 
we should handle things like that, brothers and sisters. Because we're called to be servants of God. That's what we're called to do. So that's how we should deal with our neighbors and our enemies. Pray for them. Be humble. Let's go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Because we're going to deal with this forgiveness today. Because forgiveness is vital for you and your salvation. Matthew 5, and we're going to read one verse, verse 8. When you got it, go ahead and read, my brother. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Again, the Lord knows you. He, you know, they say, people say, the Lord knows my heart. You're right. He does know your heart. Mm -hmm. And he knows if you for real or if you fake it. And you know how you can have a pure heart? By loving God and loving the neighbor as yourself. And that's how you're fulfilling the law. You're hanging all the law, hanging it on these two, which means that you're going to carry out God's commandments. With a clear conscience. And that's how you have a pure heart, brothers and sisters. Because you know, hey, my conscience is clear because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. That's how you have a pure heart. Right? You got to have a mind to have a pure heart. Let's go over to Philippians, the second chapter, Philippians 2. Because with that pure heart, we got to get it from Jesus. We got to have the same mindset because when the Bible talks about the heart, it's talking about the heart of the mind, brothers and sisters. It's talking about the heart of the mind because this right here only pumps blood to your other organs. But when you have it in your heart, that word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. That's what it's talking about. So we're going to go to Philippians, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up in verse number five because we got to have a certain mindset to even obtain this pure mind. What does it say, my brother? Verse five. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh huh. Who, being the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal with God, mm -hmm. but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Right. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. No, nah, he he puffed himself up and, and, and he and, and he decided that he was gonna get people back. He became obedient. He became obedient and he humbled himself even to the death of the cross, brothers and sisters. And you talking about God. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And he came down in the form of a servant. So if he was able to do it, why can't you? Why can't you humble yourself? You know, some people, the words, I'm sorry, is too painful to even come out of their lips. <laughs> you know, a person would rather... Jump off a bridge before they say the words, I'm sorry. And it shouldn't be like that. You got to humble yourself, brothers and sisters. Continue on. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Uh -huh. Things in heaven and the things in earth and things under the earth. Uh huh. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Right. So guess what? He is Lord and he is Lord of all, but yet he humbled himself. Continue on, my brother. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my present only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's the key, brothers and sisters. Every man has to work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling, right? There's no automatic end. 
You got to work at this thing. Continue on, my brother. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless. Mm -hmm. The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Mm -hmm. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Right. And you don't want to you don't want to do that in vain because you got a lot of people claiming the name of the Lord out here. But if you're going to be a light, then you can't carry on like the world. And the world is the one that want to get people back and be puffed up. And you ain't going to do get the best of me. Remember, the Lord said vengeance is mine. And a lot of times you don't know the salvation that you are bringing to people when you are forgiving them. Because sometimes, you know, you know that saying that hurt people hurt people. A lot of times people are dealing with things that happen in their past and in their lives. And they're just lashing out on you. But nevertheless, we're called to forgive, brothers and sisters. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Because these are all nuggets, brothers and sisters, that's going to help you. To deal with forgiveness, right? In Matthew, the fifth chapter, you want to have that mindset and you want to be able to have, uh, be able to go to the Lord when you need to with a pure, clean heart. So that means that you can't be holding nothing in against your brother. You can't be uh, 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 harboring some malice or some hate and some discontent for something that you haven't forgiven. Mm -hmm. So in Matthew, the fifth chapter, and 23rd verse, it's going to let you know how to deal with your brother. Right? When you got the 23rd verse or the fifth chapter, go ahead and read it, my brother. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother have ought against thee, Mm -hmm. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Now these words are written in red. So these are the Lord's words right here. And what the Lord is showing you is that your reconciliation with your brother is more important than your offering that you want to give. Because a lot of people, they'll pay their tithes, they'll pay their, their free will offering, they contribute to the church they go and donate to the homeless and they'll do all these charitable acts but they'll do it while beefing with uh individuals and the lord ain't dealing with that he's telling you to leave your gift at the altar go get it straight with your brother and once you once you got it straight with your brother then come back and, and, and submit your offer that's when it'll be accepted right Let's back it up to the 18th chapter of, uh, I'm sorry, let's go forward to the 18th chapter of Matthew. We're going to go to the 18th chapter of Matthew. And we're going to continue to see how to deal with your brother when you have an offer, right? Because there are steps and levels to reconciliation. Matthew 18 and 15, what does it say, my brother? Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, uh -huh. go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Mm -hmm. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Right. So first step you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go to your brother and, and, and express what happened to him alone. You're not supposed to go and tell it on his job. Go tell all his friends. Go tell his wife. Go tell his, his, his family members. You're supposed to go to that brother or you're supposed to go to that sister and try to work out your issue amicably. Right? That's what you're supposed to do first. Continue on, my brother. But if he would not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, one or two more, 
that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Right. So now if he's not, he say he ain't trying to hear it. Now that's when you got to bring two or three witnesses. And it's not talking about two or three of your best friends. It's talking about two or three mature people in the word of God, brothers and sisters. Two or, 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 or three witnesses that have some wisdom and some common sense in their mind. So y'all can work this thing out righteously. Right? So continue on, my brother. And if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. Mm -hmm. But if you neglect to hear the church, let them be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. All right, so... If he don't want to hear the two or three witnesses, then you bring it to the church because the church is supposed to know the laws of God and they're supposed to deal with matters according to the word of God. If he ain't trying to hear from the church, that don't mean that you just write him off and don't forgive him. It's saying that y'all gonna have to go y'all separate ways, but even though y'all are going y'all separate ways, you still forgave that brother. You still forgave that sister, and you're not holding that all against them because you tried your best. The thing that you cannot do is control how other people respond to you either asking for forgiveness or you forgiving. You can control you, so you have to make sure that your heart of your mind is clear and your conscience and you've done the right thing. You can't make them forgive you or you can't make them apologize. Right? Where we at, my brother? Uh, beginning of 18. All right. Go ahead. Very as I said to you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Right. So guess what? If you forgive that man on earth, he's forgiven in heaven. If you loose, it'll be loosed in heaven. Right? You forgave that debt. It's forgiven on earth and in heaven, right? That means that both of y'all, if y'all forgive each other, y'all are able to bring that gift to the altar. Right? Because that's what God wants. Continue on, my brother. Again, I said to you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall speak, I'm sorry, that they shall ask, it should be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Why? Because y'all have forgave each other. Why? Because y'all are on one accord. Now, the two or more can come together and agree. You see what I'm saying? It ain't like one beef with the other and I'm still trying to ask God for what I need. No. We have forgiven each other and our consciences are clear. The heart of our minds are clear. And we're dealing with each other in righteousness again. That's opening up that line of communication with the Lord. All right? Continue on. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. All right. So gather together in his name. So in the name of Jesus, y'all doing this thing righteously. Now he's in the midst. But he ain't in the midst when y'all beefing. He in the midst when y'all forgiving each other and y'all walking righteously in the Lord. All right. James. Let's go to James 1. James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. Right? And verse 19, because there are levels and steps to forgiveness and being humble and being a light and an example. See, as a servant of God, we got to be quick to listen, slow to speak. And you got to worry about having the last word all the time. Verse 19, what it say, my brother? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, mm -hmm. slow to speak, slow to wrath. Nah, quick to get the last word in. Every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Right. You can't be a hothead, brothers and sisters, because being a hothead or make you end up in one or two places. Prison or in the graveyard. Continue on, my brother. 
for the wrath of man working not the righteousness of God. Right. A lot of times when you're angry, it'll cause you to walk in error against the commandments of God because you're angry and you want you don't you don't want the best for somebody when you're angry. But you gotta continue to have this word hidden in the heart of your mind so you don't sin against the Lord. All right? Continue on, my brother. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. <laughs> so through the engrafted word and meekness, that's what's going to save your soul. Continue on. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Right, because you don't want to be one of these people that's claiming to love the Lord with your lips. But your heart is far from them because sometimes some of these church folks can be the meanest people that you've ever met. You know, they, they praise the Lord and one breath from soon as they get out of their first day church, they cussing somebody out of, while they going to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. But if you fear the Lord and keep the commandments and you place them in your heart, then that's what's going to be able to save your soul. Skip down to 25. But whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not forgetful here, but do of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Why? Because the Lord's law is not bondage. There's liberty in the law of the Lord. That's why it's called a law of liberty. Because it's going to show you how not to walk in error. There's freedom in Christ Jesus, and there's freedom in the word of God, brothers and sisters. Right? There's freedom in that. Let's go to the book of Luke. Let's look at a parable. Let's look at a parable in the book of Luke that's going to be dealing with the tax collector and the publican, the tax collector and the, and the, and the, and the sinner. Because we have to be humble, brothers and sisters. We have to be real with God. And we have to confess our faults to the Lord. And the only way you can do that is if you have forgiven. Because you got to be able to be real with the Lord. And you can't be real with the Lord if you holding grudges. Luke 18. We're going to pick it up in 10. When you got it, go ahead and read, my brother. Two men went up to the temple to pray. Mm -hmm. One a Pharisee and the other a publican. Mm -hmm. The Pharisee stood and prayed, thus mm -hmm. with himself, God, I thank thee. They are not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast mm -hmm. twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess, and the publican, standing far off, would not lift up so much as his eyes to heaven, mm -hmm. but spoke mm -hmm. upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Hold on. So you see that this publican, and you got, and you could look today, it's still people with that same arrogance. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored, and I go to church every week, and I do this, and I do that. And I'm this and I'm that. I'm Bishop so and so and Reverend Doctor so and so. Listen, this this sinner, this publican, just smote on his chest. He didn't even look up to to the sky. He just said, "Lord, I'm a sinner. Please show me your mercy." And the Lord was able to see that that man was real. Continue on, my brother. I tell you. This man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that hung with himself shall be exalted. See, you can't be all puffed up and full of pride and arrogance and unforgiving and all these things and think that the Lord is dealing with you. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with the man that has a contract heart that is humble and meek, that wants to be a servant. Skip down to 17, my brother. Verily I said to you, 
whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. See, it's the reason he said that, brothers and sisters, because you notice how humble and meek little children are, mm -hmm. right? You, you know, they, 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 they hold, they, 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 they hold your hand, and they look to their parents or to individuals, teachers, or what have you, to lead and guide them. They are quick to forgive each other. They, 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 they love each other and they, they, they're, they're quick. You know, a child, I mean, as they get older, some of, you know, they started developing more personalities, but these little children, they say they're sorry, they ask for forgiveness, and they, and they are quick to forgive each other. We got to have that mindset like a little child, brothers and sisters. You know, and we can't be full of all these vain things and puffed up. Right? If we don't have that mindset, the Bible says that you're going to inherit the kingdom. Right? So we're going to go over to, we're going to go back to the 11th chapter of Luke. And we want to deal with how our prayers are affected by unforgiveness. We're going to deal with that. Because, yes, our prayers are infected, affected indeed if we don't forgive. As a matter of fact, the disciples, they asked Jesus an important question on how to pray. So let's take a look at that in Luke, the 11th chapter. We're going to pick it up in verse number one. When you got it, go ahead and read, my brother. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Uh -huh. Give us this day by day our daily bread. Uh -huh. And forgive us of our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Uh -huh. And lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. So you see that it says, forgive us of our sins, right? But we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Now these words are interchangeable. Sins, trespasses, debts, they all are talking about transgressions and sins. Mm -hmm. Now let's go over to the book of Matthew and we're going to pick up this same a uh, 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 passage, but from a different account. We're going to look at it from Matthew's account. Right? We're going to look at the Lord's Prayer from Matthew's account so we can show you that debt, sin, transgression, this all mean the same thing. Verse 9. Matthew, this manner, verse nine. Go ahead and read it. Manner, Therefore, pray ye, mm -hmm. our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Uh huh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh huh. And forgive us of our debts. Uh huh. As we give our debtors. All right. You see here it said, Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. All mean the same thing. Skip down to 14, my brother. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Mm -hmm. But you forgive not man their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Right. So here it says trespasses, but you see it's all in a change. But what it's telling you is in order to be forgiven, you got to forgive, brothers and sisters. It's that simple. In order to be forgiven, you got to forgive. Right. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Because this is dealing about forgiving one another, brothers and sisters. And we got to be like the Lord on this. Right? Because the Lord, if he held on to our past sins, we'll be in trouble. But he forgave our past sins. If we were sincere. Psalms 85. And we're going to pick it up in verse number two. And you got it? Go ahead and read, my brother. 
thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people uh-huh thou hast covered all their sin mm-hmm. see like thou hast taken away all thy wrath mm-hmm. thou hast turned thyself in the fierceness of thy anger uh-huh turn us O god of our salvation and cause thy anger towards us to cease uh-huh thou be angry with us forever would mm-hmm. thou drive thy anger to all generations mm-hmm. would thou not revive us again that our people may rejoice in thee uh-huh show us thy mercy O lord and grant us thy salvation mm-hmm. i will hear what god the lord will speak for we speak peace unto his people and to his saints but let them not turn again to folly mm-hmm. surely his salvation is not them that fear him that glory may dwell in your land in right. our land mercy and truth are met together no right? they separate they said mercy and truth are met together. Mercy and truth are met together. Mm-hmm. Right? Pin that, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. These are this is what the Lord is trying to show you, brothers and sisters. That the Lord has forgiven iniquity. And he is long suffering. It says, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Finish it out, my brother. Truth shall spring out the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. See, that's the, the, the Lord is ready to forgive. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is walk in his law, statutes, and commandments. All right? And we can always look to Jesus as the great example. And this is the type of forgiveness that we need to have, right? Because if we don't, we're in error. And if we're in error, we can't be praying to the Lord because if you're praying to the Lord in a sinful state, the Lord don't hear you. There's no such thing as a sinner's prayer, brothers and sisters. There's no such thing as a sinner's prayer. You got to repent. That's why in Acts, the second chapter, 30 verse, say repent. And be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin, and then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You gotta repent. And once you repent, then the Lord will be able to hear you. Let's go to John to validate that. John the ninth chapter, so we can validate that. So you won't think that just this is my word. You're gonna read one verse, John 9 and 31. When you got it, go ahead and read, my brother. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and do it his will, him he heareth. What? Do you mean that I'm wasting my time and he's not hearing my prayer? He said that he heareth not sinners, brothers and sisters. Right? Come on, let's get another witness. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. First chapter. Pick it up in verse number 15. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Mm -hmm. Yea, when you make me any prayers, I would not hear your hands are full of blood. Wow. That's another witness right there to show you that the Lord ain't going to hear you because your hands are full of blood. In this case, you know, full of blood can be um, forgiveness because that's what we're talking about tonight. But he's not hitting you because your hands are full of blood. Continue on, my brother. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Uh huh. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Learn to do well, brothers and sisters, and repent. Learn to do well. Repent. Then the Lord will hear you. Continue on. Come now. And let us reason together, said the Lord. Mm-hmm. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be like, the, though they be red like crimson, mm-hmm. they shall be as wool. Mm-hmm. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Mm-hmm. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Praise the Lord. So there you have it. 
You know that there's no such thing as a sinner's prayer. We got to be real with this thing. James, let's go to the book of James. Let's go to the book of James. Because you got to repent. You got to walk righteous. And you got to confess your sins. Right? If you don't confess your sins, then you're not repenting. You have to confess your sins. Confess your faults. You got to learn to say the words, I'm sorry. And you got to mean it. And you got to turn away from that action. Because just speaking it and saying it is nothing but a verbal apology, brothers and sisters. It's nothing if it don't follow up with action and there's action behind it. Verse 13, what it say, my brother? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Mm -hmm. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Uh -huh. Is any among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Uh huh. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Yeah, you want you want the Lord to hear your prayers? Mm -hmm. Then you better do this thing right here. 16, what does it say, my brother? Confess your, confess your faults one to another and pray for another that ye may be healed. Mm -hmm. The sexual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You got to confess your faults one to another, right? Because that's the beginning of reconciliation, brothers and sisters. Confessing, saying I'm sorry, and meaning it. Skip down to 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and want to convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So when you deal righteously with your brother, you helping him and you helping you, brothers and sisters. Right? Walking righteously in the Lord. We got three more places after that. After this right here. Uh, let's go to 1 John. Third chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 15. Because you can't call yourself a servant of God and you're holding in Harboring hate, envy, and hating on your brother. Verse 15, what does it say, my brother? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Mm. And you know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. So the Bible saying if you hate your brother, then you 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 a murderer. And you know murderer is not gonna inherit the kingdom of God. That's enough said, that's self-exclamatory. Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Because you can't let pride and envy and jealousy turn into hate, right? Because that's what's going to harbor out all of that stuff, right? Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Verse 16. What does it say, my brother? These six things do the Lord hate. Uh huh. Yes. Seven are abomination to him. Uh huh. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hand that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides a wicked imagination, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sowed discord among brethren. And all these are characters of someone who has not forgiven. Right, because when you're forgiven, you're gonna fall into all this stuff, brother. And the Lord hate that. And, and the seventh part of that is an abomination, right? So you want to forgive so you don't get caught up in that. So let's go to our last scripture, which is Matthew the 18th chapter, and we're gonna end this thing with a parable, right? So Matthew the 18th chapter, we're gonna pick it up in verse number 21. Because this parable about the king and the two men that went dead. And we're going to leave you with that. 18 and verse 21. What does it say, my brother? Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Mm -hmm. So seven times. Jesus said to him, I say not to thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. 
See, a lot of us, man, that's almost impossible to do, man, because a lot of us let pride get in the way. Mm -hmm. But as much as that brother sin against you, that's as much, even more, you got to forgive that brother. Continue on, my brother. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. Mm -hmm. When he had began to reckon, one was brought to him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Mm -hmm. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. And his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made right the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying lord have patience with me and i will pay thee all so you see that this man owed the king ten thousand talents and the king was getting ready to sell his family but the man asked the lord to have mercy on him he asked the king to have mercy on him Let's see what the king did. Continue on. Then the Lord, that servant, was moved with compassion and lose him and forgave him the debt. Mm -hmm. He forgave him. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid head, hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. So he had somebody under him that was. That fell into the same thing, and instead of forgiving him, he put hands on the brother. Probably choked him up and all that. Continue on. And his fellow servant fell down his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will mm -hmm. pay thee all. Mm -hmm. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he shall pay the debt. Mm. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they was very sorry and came and told to their Lord all that was done. See, in this parable, know that the angels are recording all that you do. They watching and reporting to the Lord all that you do. So in this instance, fellow servants saw what happened. They reported it back to that king. Continue on, my brother. Then his Lord, after he had called him and said to him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee of all that debt because thou desires me. Mm -hmm. Does not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Mm -hmm. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors to should pay all that was due unto him. Right. So, so these tormentors, I, I, who, I can imagine what, what they did to this brother and they tormented him. But you can see the moral of the story is since this brother didn't forgive, his king made him pay his original penalty. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is you need to forgive, brothers and sisters, or the Lord is going to make you pay your penalty. Let's finish this thing off. So likewise, shall my heavenly father do also to you if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother, their trespasses. So there you have it, brothers and sisters. Forgive and it shall be forgiven. If you don't forgive, the Lord is not going to forgive you. It was stated in the Lord's prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. So again, to tie up today's lesson, was forgive us our debts. And I'm prayerfully that the Lord has pricked our hearts. And if you have an art with a, your brother or a sister, forgive them. We don't know how long we have in this world. Tomorrow's not promised. Make sure that you forgive them so the Lord can forgive you. I pray that somebody got some understanding in Jesus' name. Jesus' name.